Greetings. Recall from our previous discussion, we said that with the simple perceptron, here's the model of it right here, kind of a messy drawing. Um, in this example, we have four inputs and one output. Um, the question was, mathematically, can we describe what kind of thing this can learn? And we came up with this notion of what's called linearly separable. Um, in this model over here, we have four inputs and one output, so that would be five-dimensional, and I'm not very good at drawing things in five dimensions, but it would mean that this is capable of solving problems where all of the positive examples would be on one side of a five of a five dimensional hyperplane and all the negative examples would be on the other side i'm coming over here and just looking at a simple two-dimensional problem right over here um, we can see over here i've got these positive examples over here labeled labeled with positive signs and over here i've got these negative signs over here so we can see that this is linearly separable and in fact there are lots of lines that i could draw here that would separate these into the positive and negative so there would be such a line right there that would look like this and in this example here um, a perceptron would be completely capable of learning this concept right over here so the question is, um, what's the problem? Well, the problem seems to be that we can't learn very complicated things using perceptrons. And when perceptrons were first introduced in the 1940s, people very quickly noticed this, and um, interest in neural computing, as demonstrated by this particular model, um, people started to say, well, this really isn't so great, and maybe we should be thinking about some other things. But let's consider um, some things that we already know. Um, right over here, um, very important fact, we know that logical and and logical or are both linearly separa separable. For example, here's logical and, and please note that we're implementing these as bipolar input and bipolar output. So that if I come over here, here's a negative, here's a negative, here's a positive, and clearly there's a line that can separate these. So let me see, for example, I could come over there and there's a straight line that is putting the positive example on one side and it's putting all the negative ones on the other. In a similar fashion, we can see that logical or is also linearly separable. Here are the positive examples right here. Here's the negative one. I can come over here and again, I can draw a line right there that puts the negative side, the negative example on one side and the positive ones on the other. Well, the key to our problem here is actually right in front of us. Suppose I had a situation that looked like this, and I say, well, I would like to have a neural network somehow figure this out. And the question is, is, is can I somehow get a neural network that's gonna figure out the positives from the negatives? Now, the first thing I notice over here is, is that when I look at this, this is clearly not linearly separable. There is no straight line that I can draw anywhere that's going to put all the positives on one side and all the negatives on the other. But here's something that I want you to note. If I come over here, let's say, and I guess I need to draw, turn on my pencil. There it is. I turn it on. So there's a line right there, and I can certainly have a perceptron that learns everything on that side of the neural network. So let's suppose that, that's that this is it right over here, and here are my inputs, and here's my output. And then what I can do is, is I could have another neural network that say goes like that, and I didn't draw that so well, but it could learn everything on that side of that hyperplane. And that would be another neural network over here. Same inputs, by the way, as before, but it's got an output there. And then I could come over here and I could have another neural network that would learn all the positive examples would be on that side. So again, that would be yet a third neural network and I'd have the output over here. So we can see that this neural network here could correspond to this plane here pointing up that way. 
this neural network here could point to all of these over here, and this neural net would point to all of these down here. And we can see that this region right in here that I've just shaded in, okay, that would just be the end of all of these. And what I could do is, is I could come over here if I wanted to, and I could just with a neural network, I could make this an and. And the thing that you should remember back from your, your um, discrete math days is, is that A and B and C is associative so that it actually doesn't matter. I could just come in here and do something like this. And then I'd have my output here. Okay, so what I do is, is I create this, we make this into a three input and, and this is linearly separable as we have seen before. And what this two layer network here has done is, is this is capable of learning this region right over here. Well, I think you can see how we can extend this into something even more complicated. Suppose I had something like this. And here are some nice positive examples over here. And maybe there's some positive examples over here. And maybe there's some positive examples over here. Okay. And the rest of the universe here, it's just negative all over the place. Okay. And I think you can see that what's going on. What I can do is, is I could certainly have a neural network. I could come over here. And I could have a neural network, and I, it looks like I could do three perceptrons and add them together, and I could get that region over here. And maybe over here, I could come over here, and I could do something like this. And I could have four different perceptrons, and I add them together, and it would give me that region there. And I could come over here, and I could do three over here. Pardon my lines, but you get the idea. And I could end these together, and it's going to get me that region over there. And then what I do is, is I just need to take the output of those three things, and I would OR them. Okay, and we know that OR is linearly separable. So you can imagine that over here we said there would be three neural networks. One, two, three. Over here there are four of them. One, two, three, four. Over here there are three of them. One, two, three three. Okay, and I'm just going to imagine that there are a bunch of inputs here. Okay, I'm just going to say inputs. Okay, these three over here go into an AND. These four over here all go into an AND. And these three over here go into an AND. And then what we do is we have all of these go into an OR. And here's my output. Okay. And we can see that this thing right over here, this three level neural network, okay, three layers we say, it has three layers. okay, actually could learn this region over here. I know we still have to talk about the learning algorithm, but at least geometrically appreciate that we could do that now. And we've come over the restriction about just a single perceptron. Now, this is three layers, and there are a couple of things you should know. There's some vocabulary here. This over here is the output layer. Okay, this is sometimes over here referred to as the hidden layer. And this over here is referred to as the input layer. And the theoretical result that we can get from doing all of this, what you've seen here, is, is we can say that three layers is enough to learn any region. Okay. Um, 
So this is very, very powerful. And I hope you understand this. Thank you.